नमस्ते गणेश जी सो वेलकम ऑल टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू गो थ्रू लेक्चर नंबर फाइव हैप्पीनेस एंड प्रोस्पेरिटी ऑल दो वी हैव ऑलरेडी डिस्कस्ड क्वाइट अ बिट अबाउट हैप्पीनेस एंड प्रोस्पेरिटी वील डिस्कस अबाउट द करंट सिनारी एंड सम एनालिसिस ऑफ दैट एंड अ फ्यू क्वेश्चन विच आर रिलेटेड टू दैट इन फैक्ट नाउ इफ यू लुक एट many of these uh, questions which we, which arise today you know regarding this issue of happiness and how happiness can be ensured right there are a lot of issues lot of questions are there you know in the mind of the people today so some of the questions which are there we will take up you know uh, in the light of what we have uh, presented right now is the essence of you know uh, what is the source of happiness for us what can be the source of happiness for us yes a lot of confusion is there about uh, difference between excitement and happiness yes what's yeah. the difference to in fact uh what we were saying you know um uh as the source of happiness today we have most of them are basically the source of excitement not source of happiness even temporary happiness right so the difference between happiness or continuous happiness and this excitement that we are looking for the basic difference is that if you look at this happiness or continuous happiness happiness is to be in harmony which we have tried to define right so when we are in a state of harmony within we are in a state of happiness within so this is the state of the self right and this state of the self does not depend upon outside right. and it can be continued so i can once i understand the harmony and i have this feeling of harmony i can continue with this understanding and this feeling of harmony and therefore i can be in a state of harmony and happiness all the time and certainly it is not depending on the other either the human being or the physical facility it is not dependent upon things outside and it can be continuous on the other hand if you look at this happiness that we are trying to get which is more of an excitement this is something we are trying to get from outside and when we are getting this we may or may not be in harmony you know i always recall this story for an example that one person happened to get a lottery 1 lakh rupees and when his wife came to know about it and this person had gone to the office and this information came home and the wife you know when she came to know that you know they have got a lottery for 1 lakh rupees she was quite excited but then she was quite concerned about the husband because she thought that this husband will get so excited that he might even meet a heart attack so she was worried and she went to the priest thinking that he you know this priest can be of some help and she told the priest that all this has happened you know now you have to help me and the priest said don't worry when he comes back home send him to me and i will you know handle this situation so this boy, this person came home and you know he was sent to the priest and he went to the priest and the priest started asking that suppose you get a lottery for you know 10000 rupees what will you do and this man said i will give 50% you know as donation to the priest right 50% as donation whatever i get 
and the priest met an heart attack. <laughs> no, this is the excitement. So the wife was quite worried that this husband can meet an heart attack because 51 lakh rupees, you can't just think of. But so is the case with the priest. He cannot think of 50,000, you know, getting his donation. So this is the excitement, you know, that uh, we are trying to get. So when you happen to get an reward or an award or, you know, something like that, look at your condition. When you come first in the class, look at your condition. Are you comfortable within? Are you excited within? Are you in harmony within or you are in an excited state within? So anything that you are working for today from outside, if you happen to get it, what is your state of mind? Is it in harmony or is it in excitement? In fact, if you get it, you are in excitement. If you don't get it, you are in depression. So that is how we fluctuate. Fluctuate between this excitement and depression. And you can always see that this excitement or this happiness in the name you know, through excitement this cannot be temp continuous. And if it is continuous, you will meet an heart attack. But some favorable sensations like, um, say, you know, listening to nice music, it does give me some sort of happiness. I don't know if I can call that excitement, but it does make me happy. So is that wrong? No, I wouldn't say wrong. I mean, I would say go ahead with it. At least get some temporary happiness. I mean, for me, it is fine. But don't think that this can be a source of continuous happiness. If you think so, you will be in trouble. Mm. So get some happiness at least. Get some at least happiness at least through music, through good you know, food, through good sight, good smell, good touch. But don't think that this can be a source of continuous happiness. If you think so, you will be in trouble. Similar to this, things like uh, having love for the parents, love for the siblings, maybe some close friends, it gives some happiness. That also, uh, you know, that is something that uh, we would say is good, isn't it? Yes, it is good. <clears throat> it is good. But the question is, number one, are you having this feeling in yourself and thinking of sharing with others? Or you are trying to get these feelings from others. Mm. That is one level of question. Right? Yes. If it is something in terms of having this feeling in oneself and expressing it to the other, it is quite fine. And this is what we are saying. It can be a source of happiness for us. On the other hand, if you are trying to get this feeling from others, then you are becoming dependent on the other. Right? Number one. Number two, the other person also, you know, is not in a very definite condition. If he is in a definite condition, this may work. But if he is himself is in a, you know, oscillating uh, condition, he cannot ensure this continuity. And if you are dependent on that, your continuity of happiness will be disturbed. Right. True. So mm. it is fine to work with it. You know, at least you are getting some happiness. If this person happens to respect you or you know, affect you know, show your his affection to you, you will get happiness sometime. But if you are looking for continuity of happiness from this, you may be in trouble. That is what I would say. So to have this feeling in oneself and share with the other as and when you know the other comes in contact with me it is fine it can be a source of continuous happiness on the other hand getting this feeling from others and making that a source of continuous happiness i am likely to get into trouble it may not work it's true what you're saying i think because when uh, 
we may have that feeling for our family members but then we do expect that feeling back and when we don't get that back then we do get unhappy that's true what you're saying yeah and worse than that is that are we working for ensuring this feeling in ourselves and sharing with other family members or we are not working for that and we are looking for this feeling from the other if that is the case then it is worse it is worse because we are not working for it so we will not have this feeling and we don't have this feeling but we are looking it from looking at it you know others to get that feeling and they are also not working for this ensuring this feeling in themselves so they cannot express so everyone of us is looking for the feeling and nobody is working to develop that feeling and therefore we don't get that feeling right so everybody feels very frustrated very unhappy so i keep saying that you know today what has happened is that everybody is begging for respect and everybody's bowl is empty right so we have become beggars you know looking for respect from others and our own bowl is empty so we don't have anything to give right so that is the kind of scarcity that we have created for respect on the other hand if i am you know if i have realized that yes i have to ensure this feeling of respect within me and that will ensure happiness within me and when i have this happiness this feeling of respect i can share with others then two things are happening number one i am having the feeling of respect and i am in a state of harmony and happiness within so my happiness is ensured right and because i have this feeling in me i can share it with others so i am happy within and i am willing to share this feeling of respect with everyone and the third thing is that i am not searching you know or begging for respect from others so very interesting thing now we have a situation where every i mean if everybody starts working on this everybody will have this feeling of respect within and the state of happiness within he will be willing to share this respect with everybody else right and nobody will be begging for it so we'll have abundance of it that i think would be a better situation than where we are in today but actually thinking back to the last question that we uh, dealt with about the sensation so even sensations you can have uh, food that is good for the body which is also tasty so then that sensation of taste also is fine there so what is the the role of sensation here see what we are saying is that sensations are not good or bad so we are certainly not saying all sensations are good in fact we are saying no sensation is bad okay this should be clear what we are saying is that try to make this you know sensation as source of your continuous happiness is the problem mm. trying to make this sensation which is temporary in nature as source of continuous happiness for oneself this effort is something in problem so we are not condemning the sensation sensations are good they can be rightly utilized so any sensation from the body is an information for the self which is useful to get some status about the body or about you know the things outside the physical world outside or <clears throat> even about the other human being so it is useful the information as information sensation is useful and it can be put to right use but if i try to make this as a source of continuous happiness then we are in trouble all of sensation <laughs> is to give us the you know information some information about the body or some information about the physical facility with which it is coming in contact or some information about 
you know what the other person is trying to express. So somebody is saying some words, it is falling in my ear, and there is some sensation. When I read that sensation, I can, you know, guess what words he is trying to, you know, pronounce, and what is the meaning behind it, and so on, you know. But I got this information through the sensation. In that sense, sensation is useful. If I'm putting a food in my tongue, it gives me some information. The sensation gives me some information about the food. Whether there is less salt or more salt, whether there is a lot of chili or no chili. Right? In fact, if I'm quite uh, you know, sensitive enough, then I can even sense whether this is going to be good for my you know, body or not good for my body. So that way, sensation is a very useful you know, source to get the information about whatever I'm interacting with, about the body, about the physical facility, about the other human being, you know, expression. Yes, it's a very useful thing. I can put this sensation to right use, very useful thing. When you say, I can put the sensation to right use, could you give some example? Yeah, for example, you know, my body is hurt, right? There is a wound. How do I get this information? Mm. Either I look at the wound, okay? So I have the sight of the wound, and I, you know, come to know that there is some problem with the body, you know, it has a wound. Or there is some pain in the wound, right? And I sense that pain. Now, once I've got this information, that the body is, you know, is hurt, there is a wound, then I can do whatever has to be done for the body. I can put some ointment, I can you know, get it operated or do something to take care of that wound. If that sensation was not there, how do I come to know what has happened in the body? True. Yes. Similarly, I'm walking on the road and I see a hole there, you know, this sewer line hole, which is which are there in the city now, all here and there. Right? Now, if I cannot see that, I will, you know, fall into that hole. So it is this sensation is helping me to get the information about this hole, this you know, in the a sewer hole in the main uh, road of the city. It is excessive cold. How do I come to know about the excessive cold through sensation? So I can put some warm clothes, protect the body. Somebody is shouting, shouting for help. How do I come to know? Through the sound, right? Hmm. Uh, does that mean that we treat sensation just as information? Uh, that is okay? But we shouldn't become happy or unhappy with that? Yeah, what I'm saying is that it is a good source of information, sensation. So we should take it like that. Then we can take it as a source of temporary happiness. That is also okay. Mm. But we should not try to make it a source of continuous happiness. There it will get into trouble. Yes. 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 So I want to eat food which nurture my body, right? So I will eat food which is nurturing for the body and which is tasty also. I don't mind it being tasty. In fact, in the real sense, the taste will give you information whether it is healthy or not healthy. So I would like to have food which is, you know, healthy and which is also tasty. But if I have to take a food which is healthy and not tasty, then also I would not mind it because this health is primary for me. Uh, this happiness is not going to be continuous anyway. So if I have to take chiraita, for example, or neem, right? turmeric, all these are not very tasty things. Right? 
but if there is a need for the body to um, you know repair the body or you know kind of ensure the health of the body then i will take that even mm -hmm. but in general yes i would like to have foods which are healthy and tasty and most of these fruits for example you know they are very healthy and very tasty food all the naturally grown food you know and ripe foods they are very tasty food thing you know and they are also yeah. very good for health yeah. Similarly, when we are talking about feelings from the others, is there a good, I mean, something good in that also? Like, uh, like how sensation, the right use of sensation. So when we are, you know, trying to get feeling from the other, is there something positive in that also? Or? Yeah, yeah. This is what I'm saying, you know, all these are very good source of information. So when somebody is shouting at me, right? He is communicating about his health, you know, his state of being. So good, you know, information. Similarly, if somebody is expressing respect for me, expressing affection for me, right? It gives information about him, about his state mm -hmm. of his health. So I have to be really sensitive about it, you know. I have to pay attention to it and I have to receive that information coming from the other person, you know, about his state of being through his feeling. So if I have to really share with the other, you know, fulfill my relationship with the other, right? If I have the right feeling for other, for example, I want to take care of the other, right? And now if he's ailing in pain, And when I reach there, he shouts at me saying that, you know, where were you? For hours I've been waiting. Now he is shouting at me, expressing his anger. But this is an information that he is in a very bad condition, you know. His self is quite unhappy. You know, his body may be, you know, not in good condition. You know, there may be a lot of pain in the body. So this feeling of anger that he is expressing is you know, communicating something about his self or about his body, you know, state of the self or state of the body, which is a useful information. The problem will arise when I make that feeling from the other a source of my happiness and there, that also source of continuous happiness. Then it will not work. So I will take this feeling as an expression of his state of the self or state of the body, largely the state of the self. And with that information, then I will try to work out how I can be responsible towards him. I can, you know, how I can be responsible in that relationship. So it is useful information. Mm. Most of the time, if somebody shouts at us, uh, we don't even think about their state. We are thinking about our uh, own, we, we only start becoming so unhappy, we don't think about the other person at all. Yes, true, true. I mean, I keep quoting this example, I've quoted this many times in the morning sessions, um, that, you know, this happened with Buddha. So Buddha was sitting and, they, and one person came and he was quite angry and he spat on the face of Buddha. And then Buddha said that, okay, do you have to say anything more? And this Ananda who was always to be by his side, he said, what are you saying? You know, if I only had my soul with me, I would have thrown him away. Taken his head out of his neck. Now, this is how Ananda is looking at it. And Buddha is saying, no, no, he wanted to express something and he could not express it, express it with words. So this is the way he expressed. So this is an expression. Expression of state is, you know, state of the self. And this man goes away and next day he comes back and he's, you know, asking for apology. 
And then Buddha says to this Anand that look at him, you know. Now he has still miss, you know, uh, kind of, he's lacking words to express. And then he tells him to this person that, you know, there is no point asking for apology because you were different at that time and now you are something different. So the one who is pet and the one who is asking for apology are two different people, you know, different being, or at least two different states of being. And I have also, you know, changed that Buddha was different and now this Buddha is different. So don't ask for apology. Now this is how you can see them, see these things as information. Information coming from the other, which gives something about his state of being, state of the self. Now what happens to us is that because we have kind of connected this to our happiness, we get happy or unhappy because of this information coming from the other, this feeling coming from the other. And therefore we become reactive. If we take it as an information, we'll be responsive. We'll be able to respond to all these situations. So it is good to observe the feeling from others and take it as a source of information. But it becomes problematic when we take it as a source of happiness for ourselves. And we think in terms of getting continuity of happiness through this feeling. So moment it is, you know, um, not continued, we are in trouble. When we are saying continuous happiness, uh, there is this doubt that whether we will become bored if we are continuously happy. Uh, what I was discussing in the last, uh, <coughs> that lecture three, we had some questions and we, I said that two fundamental questions. One is, is it desirable? The other is, is it feasible? Now, let us ask this question first. Do we desire for continuity of happiness? The answer is yes. Now the second question is, is it feasible? And what we are proposing that it is feasible. It is feasible to ensure continuity of happiness, right? On the basis of ensuring right feeling in the self and right, you know, first to ensure right understanding in the self and then right feeling in the self. If we can do that, we can be in a state of continuous happiness. So we are saying it is desirable and it is feasible. Now, what you are saying is that though it is desirable, it does not seem to be feasible. And I'll tell you what is the reason behind that. Now, what is happening is that you are looking for continuous happiness as a desirable state. But the program that you are making to ensure that continuity of happiness is something which is not continuous in nature. So the problem is with your program. So if you want to get continuity of happiness by eating tasty food, the problem is that you cannot have the continuity. So you will get bored of it. So however of liking that sweet may be, if you are eating that sweet for a long time, you will get bored of it. So the problem is not with happiness and its continuity. The problem is with the program that we have derived, you know, designed to ensure continuity of happiness, which has no continuity. And that is what we were saying, that if we are trying to get happiness through sensation or through feeling from others, then we are bound to get into this problem. That after some time we will get bored of it. Because by nature, it does not have the continuity. By nature, it does not have this continuity. So somebody comes and warms, you know, with a lot of warms, he's shaking hands with you, expressing his, you know, kind of affection, his respect, which is good. But if you stuck to this expression, for example, he holds his, her hand and does not leave. Right? 
then you are in trouble you will start shouting for help so that expression for a moment was fine but if he holds on to your hand you will be in trouble this is what is happening you are getting bored of that program which you have designed for continuity of happiness on the other hand if you are working for understanding the harmony and feeling of harmony you will let not get bored of it you would like to continuously work on it and be with it so there is a desirability for continuity of happiness and there is a feasibility for it but we have not designed the right kind of program we have designed a program which by its very nature does not have the continuity that is what we said that this feeling from others or sensation from through the body it has no continuity so if you try to maintain the con continuity you will get bored of it one question that had come up earlier but if you you know that happiness and unhappiness they go together if you can just uh, give your observation about that that happiness yeah. and unhappiness are two sides of the of yeah, a coin now the answer is simple that if you are depending on any source which does not has the nature of continuity then you will have this happiness and unhappiness going together so this food i was talking about you know tasty food tasty sweets that you like very much so when you have enough of this sweet do this experiment and you will find out so enough of sweets okay 5 kg 10 kg you bring and you start eating that food that sweet initially it will be very tasty and very you know you will feel that yes it is necessary for health also when you are full up to the stomach you will start thinking that it is unnecessary but you find it tasty so you continue to eat but when it is full up to the stomach up to the neck right now you see that you have lost the taste also and now you don't want to eat any more but if somebody forces you to eat what will happen will it remain a source of happiness or source of unhappiness mm -hmm. unhappiness and happiness so this is how happiness and unhappiness goes together and you cannot separate them similarly you get happiness you know if somebody is coming and showing respect to you but he can't keep showing respect to you all the time so he has other things to do and you think that now he is not respecting you or is not expressing that respect to you and you get into unhappiness so it is not because of the happiness that it, you know this they do go together happiness and unhappiness but because of the program that we have been seeking you know for ensuring this happiness and its continuity but don't you think that uh, i am able to see that i am happy only when uh, i go beyond unhappiness so uh, to be able to recognize that i am happy i have to see you know what it is like to be unhappy then i am able to appreciate happiness i mean see i mean one observation i would say is that you had enough unhappiness to you know appreciate happiness okay and all of us had enough unhappiness so we don't have to have an happiness to appreciate happiness that's one thing the second thing is that if you really start looking at yourself you know and that is what we are saying you know this natural acceptance we are bringing in every time because that gives you a basic reference from where you can see these things right so for example this feeling of respect what is naturally acceptable to you feeling of respect or disrespect this question you can ask and you know decide for yourself so what is it respect respect now in order to appreciate this feeling of respect and that state of happiness born out of this 
I don't have to get this respect first. Mm. Similarly, when my body is healthy, I can see directly that yes, my body is healthy. Now, in order to appreciate that the body is healthy, I don't have to, you know, go for ill health. <laughs> The unfortunate thing is that we don't have this, you know, kind of uh, this confidence that there is something in us which can see what is right, what is not right directly. And we don't have to go through otherwise, you know, condition in order to appreciate what is the right condition. This I can look within and find out. I can look within and find out. So that basic reference is to be made active. Today, unfortunately, we are not having that basic reference, which is already there sitting in us. So for everything, we have to look outside. And when for everything we are looking outside, then this logic comes in, that if there is an unhappiness, then you want to get out of this state of unhappiness, right? And when you get out of that state of unhappiness, you feel relieved. And that relief is what you are calling as happiness. Mm -hmm. We are not saying that. We are saying that you have a natural condition and you can see what this natural condition is. And to be in that natural condition is happiness. So we are not defining this happiness as negation of negation. We are defining happiness as assertion, assertion to be in a state of harmony. We are not saying happiness is to be out of contradiction. Mm. So we can see this state of harmony within and we can be in that state of harmony within. And therefore, you know, we can see it directly. I don't have to get into contradiction with somebody outside and then try to dissolve that contradiction and then get happiness out of it. If this is what I have to do, then yes. Mm. So, for example, you create this situation. I have to come first in the class. And now you are unhappy about you know, this not happening. And then one day, you know, you get the result and you come first in the class. At that moment, you are free from that contradiction, right, within. So that gives you relief. But then what happens next moment? Now you want to come first in the next class, right? Mm. So again, you are in contradiction, unhappiness within. So unfortunately, we are defining happiness as, un as you know, kind of absence of unhappiness which we have created for ourselves. So if I had a feeling of relationship with every student in the class, I would have been in a state of happiness. I would not have got into, into this state of unhappiness because of this competition, because of this contradiction, because of this opposition. So we are first creating unhappiness. And then we are trying to come out of it. So that is how we think that, you know, to appreciate happiness, we have to go through unhappiness. No, not very true. We have to, we can see this happiness directly. We can see this harmony and happiness directly and work for it rather than going through the unhappiness. There is this concern that uh, if we are constantly happy, we will stop growing because only when we are unhappy do we work to do something to get happy. So we strive, we sort of uh, work harder. But if we are constantly happy, then we'll stop growing. Yeah, this is also same thing, you know, same thing. We have got into contradictions. We have got into competition, right? And now we think that, you know, we will work only when there is competition, there is contradiction. Right? 
Now ask yourself, if you are having this feeling of relationship with all your colleagues in work, right? You think you'll be able to work better? Or Certainly. you will work better when you are in contradiction with your colleagues? I'll work better when they are uh, not in contradiction. Yes. I've observed, I've been in academic institutions and I've found that, you know, today, even in the academic uh, institution, the teachers are so much, you know, in fight that they are spending more than 50% of their time and energy in trying to oppose others. And as a result, the students suffer. I mean, they suffer, of course, the teachers suffer. And the students also suffer. If only they had a feeling of relationship for each other, they will have, you know, they will be comfortable within. And they will have enough time to pay to the students, you know, to pay attention to the students. So certainly the work will be much more and much better. So we did this work, this experiment in our department. The, you know, we worked on this issue of relationship among the faculty members. And slowly it became very comfortable. And then everybody, you know, everyone who's going to the class will go to the head's room, you know, and it can be any other room, not particularly the head room. And we made a provision for, you know, taking tea together. So he'll go and sit there, take tea, and go to the class and come back and then, you know, go there. So most of the time, some five to six teachers are sitting there, you know, talking and taking tea. Now, suddenly the one notice comes from the uh, director that we should have a regular meeting of the department to decide on things, at, at least once in a week. Now, we are having meeting many times in a day. So far, it is not a problem for us, us, it is not a problem. Whenever an issue comes, you know, everybody is expressing his opinion and some decision is reached. So for other departments, it is difficult to have this meeting once in a week. For us, we are having this meeting every day, you know, many times. So anything, you know, in terms of taking a decision, anything in terms of making a proposal was much easier than for any other department. And now we are not fighting among each other, so we can pay attention to the students. Attention to the department, for the well-being of the department. All this is possible. Mm -hmm. So I can be in harmony and happiness and grow. And grow better. As an individual, as a family, as a society. I mean, so just think if the nations were in harmony, right? Instead, we will save more than 50% of our physical resources. I mean, the nations are spending so much of time and effort and resources preparing to fight with each other, like India and China, for example. What are we doing? If we were in harmony, we would have saved all this. True. Um, thing of you know being happy uh, from our side, we can try to be happy, but a lot of times it depends on others. Say in my family or you know other people, uh, I am trying to be happy. I am trying to do things right, but then something happens from outside, and again that happiness is gone. So it depends on other people also. Yeah, this is what we have been saying, that if my happiness depends upon my understanding of harmony and my feeling of harmony, my thought of harmony, then this is all within this self. Yeah. Right. So I can be in a state of harmony and happiness within. And it does not depend upon outside. So this is what we are saying, that it is an issue of development of the consciousness. 
development of right understanding, right feeling in the self. And that can be the source of happiness, continuous happiness. If that is the case, then I am not dependent on the other. I am not dependent on the other, either the human being, you know, my family members, or the physical facilities around, or even the state of the body. The problem is there because I, my happiness, I have made it dependent on others, on the feeling from others, on the sensation from the, through the body. So every time, you know, I want to work for happiness, I start complaining that I am not able to ensure happiness because the other person is not expressing the right feeling. Right? The other person is shouting at me, you know, is dominating me. Or I think that, you know, the physical facilities are not there. I don't even have enough you know, to make a house, to buy a car and things like that. All this complaining is coming because somehow I have related my happiness with this outside world. And I'm not working for the right program of happiness that is ensuring this right understanding and right feeling in oneself. That is basically the development of my own consciousness. So we are saying right in the fourth lecture, we said we have to work for ensuring this development of consciousness to human consciousness. Presently, we are in animal consciousness. With animal consciousness, we, can be, we become very dependent on others. With human consciousness, we can ensure this harmony and happiness within. And we can be a source of happiness to others, source of happiness and prosperity to others. So that is what we have to work for. Then we will not have complaints that other is not cooperating for me to be happy. Hmm. True. So happiness is uh, something that is so temporary. So we should aspire for something uh, much bigger like contentment, like having peace or bliss rather than just happiness. Yeah. In fact, it depends upon how you define happiness. If you define happiness as getting this right sensation and right feeling from others, then all these are excluded. Contentment, peace, bliss are included. I mean, excluded. But we can see that happiness is to be in harmony. Right? Then, when we are working for continuity of happiness, it will include all this. It will include peace of mind. It will include satisfaction in the self. And it will include a state of bliss at the level of self. So with realization of this harmony, this coexistence, this relationship, right? and with this understanding of this harmony, we will be in a state of bliss because there is nothing to contradict. And we will be able to see that whatever we desire as human beings, that continuous happiness, is ensured by way of my right understanding and my right feeling in continuity. Therefore, I will have this satisfaction, that contentment, that yes, whatever I desire is being fulfilled right? and will be fulfilled in continuity. Similarly, when I'm thinking of this harmony, this very thought of harmony is what is peace. The very thought of contradiction is lack of peace, is the disturbance in the thought, the contradiction in the thought. So when we see this happiness as being in harmony, and when I work for it, I see that my continuity of happiness includes this peace, this contentment, this bliss, and things like that. So all those big things which we are calling will be a part of this continuous happiness. Presently it is out of that list because we are working for happiness through sensation, through getting feeling from others. So that peace is not there, that contentment is not there, that bliss is not there. So it is because of our way of looking at happiness. Mm -hmm. That all these things are out of it. If we perceive and we see this happiness as something to be in harmony within, 
And if you work for it, then all this will be included. Hmm. Yes. Then small happiness will not remain a small thing. It will become a big thing. All containing, you know, all including, all inclusive. Yes. Yeah. So um, we've come to the end of uh, the questions on happiness. Uh, so we will uh, close here. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you very much.